It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. So, what's up, my friend? How are you? How is hey your guys, day? guys, I am good. Um, I am fantastic. Like you were saying, like, a lot of stuff been going on on Twitter with, like, with this hashtag, shut up, gringo. And it's like, like you said, I cover, like, a lot of people from Latin America. And so, it's always cool to talk to everybody around the globe. And when I first saw this for the first time, I was reminded, like, you know, Japanese artists are always at the back end of the stick of everything that's going on. Because uh, more or less, even before this event, I remember some sort of stuff going on with uh, other Japanese artists. For example, the Rooster Fighter one, I believe got yeah. some really bad commentary too. There was also some other person that made some sort of Native Americans and they got backlash yeah. too. And so it seemed as though not just this one, but like every single time there's like some sort of artist, like some sort of Japanese artist, like a lot of these, you know, woke types want to just attack them because it's not, you know, politically correct for their taste. Well, actually, you mentioned it. Uh, the thing about Roaster Fighter is that I, I came in in a fight uh, because I was telling people that this Antifa organization is actually pretty, pretty rough. It is getting crazy uh, out there in Portland. It is getting crazy around the United States. It, it, it's, it gives you a lot of discomfort for American people. And once I said about uh, Antifa organization and the people who was yelling about this mangaka roster fighter to shut down a meme, a meme that it was made by, an, by another Latin American citizens, I actually got on fire. I actually got demonized. I was the bad guy for crying out, out loud that you guys, you don't have the right to pretend to take out a tweet because it's just fun and it's not your political idea. First, uh, Taylor, I don't know if you actually know about something it's called Genshin Impact, the video game. I think you, you are pretty uh, pretty good about video games. So uh, Genshin Impact has a fandom. It's, it is widespread around the globe. But we had this uh, cancel culture or consequences uh, for quite a lot of time. I, I, I think around 2020, it began, it began to, to realize people were treating artists in Twitter to shut down the, the Dushinshi or fan art for two reasons specifically. One, race. You, can, you cannot whitewash a single art from Genshin Impact. Second, whatever is race or not, you have to be exactly in point with the with the color, with the with the idea that if a character is black, you have to you have to make it black. If you make someone else white, you are going to have a a rough time. So um, let's begin about talking about how do you feel uh, when people from United States that they are they are white people. They, be, they they live in, I don't know, California, uh, some of the best places to live in the world. You have an inflation rate about 70, 7% and people are freaking out. In Argentina, we have 50, 50%. So like this, this, this is a red area. We don't live like you people live. So there's a lot of um, woke activists that really think that Latin America is the same about uh, Mexico. The first thing that is is actually wrong. So they think that once you take out Mexico, everything falls apart in the same place. They don't realize we have different backgrounds, we have different ideas, and also a mixture of uh, ethnics. Because Latin Latinos is not a race. People think it's a race. 
So that is the first thing that is wrong. Actually, a lot of people say that Latino comes come from the Romance language, which also will be applied to other countries such as Italy. Yeah, yeah I was uh, going to say, yeah, because more or less Latino refers to not just, you know, the Hispanics, but also the people yeah. from like Brazil and the people from Italy. And so any exactly. sort of, you know, people that speak a language that is based in Latin, they're also Latinos. Latin. X, you you're already laughing about that because it's actually pretty disgusting to to see people who really think that Latinx is, is something real. Actually, let me tell you something about it. The polls that I use seen in on internet, there's some polls about there's only three percent of people who uh, identify with Latinx. Yeah. That's bullshit. I'm telling you, I'm telling you something. That poll is bullshit. It's it's actually way less. Uh, some some statistics talk talk about one percent or one or two at the bottom. It is not free. Like it, no way in hell. Uh, but anyway. Yeah, the thing about the whole entire Latin X thing doesn't make much sense because you know Romance language and of course that's include Spanish are built upon you know having like the gender in front of the word and sometimes even though it might have a gender it might be neutral too like for example let's take like uh la policia because la policia is like the police right and so yes. when people say la policia they don't think about you know female police officer they just you know <laughs> they think about no. you know any sort of police officer right so <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I think some some people will wish to have la policia and all females police. Uh, it, it will be pre. It, it will be a, a show, and you can make an anime about a world where all the police is made with females. Whatever. I, I, I will tell you. I will tell you something. Um, one of the most controversy things in La, in in Latin America. And this is also applied to Central America. So when I'm saying Latin America, let, let me figure out that we also we are also trying to uh, put uh, uh, Central America in the same spot. So what we have here is an issue about class. Okay, low, middle, and high-end class. Sometimes it's related to some sort of xenophobia, but it's not quite uh, the thing that the mainstream media try to apply. So. Racism exists in Latin America. Yes, I can tell you. I can tell you because I live in Argentina and and I, and I have traveled to a lot of places. But it's not the in the 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 most important thing around our society. We have a lot of uh, uh, economy crisis. We have a lot of disparity between each other. We have a lot of. Um, non-consent about politics so we we fight about politics all the time we don't fight about skin color it exists exists and it also exists in europe it's all it also uh, applied to asian in china is the same so saying that any country don't have uh issues about racism is going to be you are going to lie to yourself but the thing is you have to rank rank you have to make what is the most important thing that we have to figure out in Latin America? It is race, it is economy, it is politics and social media that is dividing us, it is entertainment. So what is the, the best thing we have to figure out? In Latin America, the, the first thing is economy. Economy is the central part of our issue. We live in poverty all the time. We also have been crushed with inflation. So color is not the same. In fact, in fact, I, let me tell you a story. Uh, in Argentina, when you, you, you are walking down the street, and I'm going to translate this, and someone who is white, like entirely white, commit a crime, let's say a, a, rob, a robbery, you know what uh, a, an Argentina guy will say? Hey, this black motherfucker is, is, uh, is stealing my things. He's stealing my phone. And, and you might think, what? He's white? No. We say it because it's like some cultural, cultural thing. So Also, what's also different in the United States in comparison to Latin American countries. It's like you were saying, like, no one would call somebody like a white person Negro on the street. They would not do that. And also... No. They would also, you know, sometimes they have nicknames based upon how you look. So, for example, yeah. if I'm skinny, they would call me flaco. If someone's fat, they would call them gordo. 
And so yeah. I don't think anyone can actually get away with saying, hey, fatty, <laughs> hey, but yeah. you, I don't think they will ever go, will actually do that in the United States ever. 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 Uh, I, I actually, uh, I, when I went to California, uh, I experienced that, that, what are you saying? And you cannot say fatty. Uh, you can say big boss. For example, I have a friend which was big. In, he was really big and has a lot of money. Uh, he lived in Orange County. We, we told him the big boss. We don't, we don't say, hey, fat, what's up, man? Um, pero acá, sí. Eh, che gordita, gorda, eh, when you are, when you have a girlfriend, okay, or you are in a relationship, it's pretty common to say, uh, hello, hello, gordita, ¿cómo estás? You are not telling her that she's like a big, fat, ugly motherfucker. <laughs> You're just saying something really, really cute. And also, bueno. and also, like, you know, negro could also be used to, you know, show, like, you know, affection to somebody, too, because I have a girlfriend from Panama, and so yeah. she called me, like, you know, negrito all the time. And so it's not like, you know, well, to hate on yeah. me, but it's like, you know, to show, like, you're loving somebody, too. It's actually a, a, yeah. a really loving word. So imagine what will happen in Twitter if you say, hey, I have a girlfriend and she loves to call me Negrito and maybe ask about some BLM activists about that. And <laughs> it's going to be a really, really hard situation for you. Man. Imagine putting with a Black Lives Matter activist and say, hey, I have a girlfriend. She told me Negrito all the time and I love it. So... <laughs> Probably he's going to pull a gun and say, "Go down, go down, buddy. <laughs> stay out, stay out of my sight." Um, I, let me tell you something, uh, af, eh, and then we are going to go into anime. Vamos a ir al anime y al arte. But let me tell you something which is pretty funny. Uh, first, we have a super chat. Let me see. Uh, it's always about segregating, creating first and second class citizens according to some political morality system. Thank you very much. Jorge, I will, I will, I will go about that that road. But so something that is really, really uh, insane. Back in the nineties, by back in the in the in the in the ninety eight ninety nine, uh, I was a, I was a young uh, child. Uh, we didn't have uh, some sort of uh, superior moral morality about black people. We actually respected. Uh, because there was a lot of uh, Afro-American actors in movies, Denzel, Denzel Washington comes to my mind. Uh, there was also a stereotype that is, okay, the Afro-American is someone who lives in a ghetto and he's pretty rough, he drives a nice car, he like he likes shiny things, he uh, listens to hip-hop music and rap. Uh, you don't fuck with him or you're going to get really in a hard situation. But Hollywood always show, show them as maybe people that live in a hard society, but they always have some, I don't know, a strength to, to look forward. Okay, so um, I'm, not, I'm not seeing that Hollywood also have racist uh, movies, but... It, it wasn't hard to swallow in Latin America. I actually loved a lot of uh, Afro-American uh, actors. But now what is happening to Latin America is it is so filled with this critical race theory and intersectionality. They are changing the way Latin American people saw Afro-Americans and now they are becoming racist each other, you know, uh, which is which is awful because the idea is that if you are going to be more inclusive, you are going to try to, to make something that everyone likes. But as I always say, you cannot make any product, any anime, any, any video game that everyone loves. It, it is impossible. You, you, there's someone who always going to disagree about it. There's, there's, all, there's someone who always would say, I don't like this thing. Um, si está leyendo los comentarios... Sí, eh, sí, sí, yo hablo español, pero a veces para esta entrevista estoy hablando en inglés para este canal. Sí, pa para que sea más fluido. Porque si no, aparte yo hablo, hablo rapidísimo. Uh, pero les voy a explicar dos cosas y lo voy a hablar en inglés. Uh, there's something, Tyler, that you have to really look forward. And I, and I, and 
And even if I'm not living in the United States, I know about everything. You really need to go deep in a book. It's called White Fragility, okay? Uh, the thing, the thing, the thing, the thing, yeah, the thing about White Fragility is that I read that book on my channel. And okay. it was like the most terrible, most racist thing I could ever read. Terrifying. So what is your thought about it, man? Yeah, yeah. Like, I agree with you. Like, if somebody was like, you know, another, you know, race, and it's like, you know, hey, Black Fragility or, you know, Chinese Asian Fragility, like... I would imagine like there were like a lot of people protesting on the streets because of the whole entire racial title, but because yeah. it's like, you know, white people is somehow okay to have some sort of original sin against them. Now this whole entire thing, like um, according to the data that I read that the racial tensions for United States has actually been down since 2012. And so even before critical race theory, before intersectionality, it has been going down like for a long time. And so yeah. I think a main reason why it's been going down for starters, like a lot of the media that we have in the United States is like, you know, stuff like MTV news that propagate this sort of idea that you cannot be racist against like white people because they're white and that you need to be like some sort of minority, have some sort of power in it. And that kind of idea is kind of, you know, trigger more racial tensions because if yeah. you're going to, you know, talk about race, you don't need to, you know, de demonize other people based upon their skin color. Let me tell you something about it. Um, the first thing that Latinos are actually saying right now is you guys have a, a, an issue about slavery. slavery. In a lot of Latin American countries, uh, we uh, take out sl slavery pretty quickly. United States took a long time within the segregation war between the North and the South, the Confederation War, if you want to say it. Um, when actually, uh, if you can, you can, you can fix, you can correct me on this, but Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln was one of the first guys trying to say, "Hey, we have to stop slavery. We have, we have to stop this." Uh, so what he's saying in in Twitter is like, "Do not came with your." segregation ideas and shim crowd laws telling Latinos that they are not white because people are actually freaking out that there are some people in Argentina, Chile, Peru, Colombia that are white. Let me show you something that I have in Twitter that is pretty crazy. I'm going to show, show you something that is <laughs> oh my it's insane, man. So this is a player, okay? The player is called Ricky Rubio. You, can you see it right now? Yeah, it's now? much better, much better. Okay, much better. So, apparently, the Stat Muse, Muse uh, Association <laughs> draw the guy like some kind of, I don't know, uh, more, more like orange type of color, but he's white, man. He looks like a carrot, carrot man. Like, you like carrots? Um... So what in the hell is happening that United States of America can, cannot define that Latin American people are also white? So this is crazy. This you is know, something for... Uh, yeah, th I can uh, tell you from personal experience because uh, when I was in high school, you know, taking Spanish class, they don't really talk much about, you know, the various backgrounds of, you know, people that live in Latin America. I remember when we were just going about, you know, your country, <laughs> Argentina, for the first time, and also, yeah. you know, like Chile, like a lot of people, the students inside the classrooms, they were like, oh, my God, there's actually white people in Latin America. And this is like my personal experience. And so I'm not sure what's going on, but the general stereotype for like a lot of people that live in my country is that everybody who is from Latin America is brown, but it's not true. Obviously, you're a clear example. No pun intended. No pun. Intended. No, but you're a clear example of you know somebody who is clearly you know not brown. And so I don't know. No why brown. People, so I don't know why people yeah. say like Latinos are just brown. It just doesn't make any. Well, no, this guy was actually thinking that outside Mexico, all all the south of the continent, because America. It's not just United States. America is you and me so uh, and someone from Colombia. So this guy, uh, I actually meet the guy in California, California. He really thought that everything around Mexico is a jungle. 
and a jungle with monkeys and people with knife like what 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 in the in the hell are you thinking man like but can you go to a map and see geography like national yeah, geogra yeah, geography the thing, was a yeah, pretty no, no, good yeah, the thing about the geographic stuff like the geographic stuff is that it's not necessarily required to teach it in our schools and so that's yeah. why like, a lot of people here cannot figure out what's on the map fortunately for me like i just use like you know the internet to you know figure that stuff out yeah but for the most cases like a lot of schools here don't require that to be taught to our students that's unfortunate okay well people are saying that actually the the, the knife uh thing is real i, I agree uh, if you go out in the night 2 a.m you better you better watch out because there's going to be a lot of uh Huh. Uh, a lot of seinen anime going around. You're going to have a, a lot of Makishima people trying to stab you back or grief it or whatever. Uh, make make your mind in any anime you want. But th there's actually a meme. You have a Kimetsu no Shaiba Tanshiro and the guy is, is, is having like two guns and saying, welcome to Mexico, motherfucker. Uh, it, it, it is a meme. We live in a society that is actually way more hard than American city, United uh, citizen things. But let me go straight to the point that I actually think is getting on fire. It is not about Latinos. It is about why. Why so much segregation and, and Black Lives Matter and gender spectrum, but no one is trying to protect Japanese people. They say, stop Asian hate. I, I, I remember when uh, a crime took out in United States 2021, and there was a hashtag called Asian hate, stop Asian hate, but never about Japanese. It was all about Chinese and, and South Koreans, which I agree is you have to stop the Asian hate, but uh, nobody talk about Japanese. Yeah, so, yeah the, the thing about the stop Asian hate is like, uh, it was like a response to like, I guess like a lot of people attacking other people because they blamed the Chinese people for the coronavirus. And that was like crazy too. But like you, you were saying, like I never heard anybody like talking about you know the Japanese people. It was mostly like you know no. Chinese people. And what's sad about yeah. the videos that I've seen on the campaign is that a lot of black people seem to be attacking Asian people. It's not even the white people. So it's no. like something going so, on. <laughs> imagine if I uh, I don't know. Uh, let's say. Uh, <laughs> Kawa Corporation, which is quite big, man. Imagine the Kawa Corporation saying, you cannot make this manga. Why? Because um, you are white. Japanese. <laughs> because you are Japanese. Uh, and now we think that Japanese are white. Uh, but the, the manga will say, but people of black people, Japanese black people, the term black people is quite different, is 1%. Maybe we have a mixed race, race between South Koreans and Japanese. There, there's a lot of dispute about that. Imagine if someone cannot make Chainsaw Man, <laughs> Hunter, uh, Hunter, I don't know, Kimetsu no Jaiba, based in their skin color. Like, this is why they're attacking Japanese creators, because they do not comply with intersectionality and diversity department. This is why. Es la razón. I agree, because... Um... Mostly because when you look at anime, when you read manga, it doesn't have any sort of, you know, racial politics. Like, the only sort of movies, like you said earlier, like, it comes directly from Hollywood because they have these sort of insane practices about the quotas and, of course, not hiring people because of their race. And so, like you were saying earlier, they're making people more racist, ironically enough, than, you know, try to help the problem out. Uh, but, but also now... Uh... The, the the racist problem began in United States, but now it's getting widespread. And let me tell you something. I'm seeing, I swear of God, and I don't like to swear of God. Lo juro, he visto latinoamericanos utilizando el movimiento BLM, utilizando el movimiento Antifa, <laughs> utilizando las políticas intersecciones en Latinoamérica, chabón. It makes no donde, sense. That makes no it sense. makes no fucking yeah. sense. I know. But I personally, pero eso pasa, dude, I'm going to tell you why. Because they consume a lot of YouTubers and influencers that they, this is a basically import a United States idea and push 
push it to the Latin American community. This is yeah, what is uh, happening. Yeah, have you heard? Have you seen the debate that happened with Denim? Because there was like this one girl that Denim was debating, and more or less she was like repeating the same sort of stuff happening in the United but, States, but she was from Argentina. Uh, think about this very quick, very quickly. De dónde vinieron? De dónde vinieron los pronombres de Twitter? They, them, he, am, him, uh, <laughs> he, her. De no. dónde, where, where they came from, where they started. I tell, I'm going to tell you, it started in the United States because I saw it in real time. And who are the people now in Latin America using the pronouns? Latinos. They use he and him, but they speak Spanish and say, what the fuck are you talking about, man? You, you, you speak in Spanish and you put pronouns they and them? You think, you think you are going to be more respectful and people are going to treat you better because you are from Peru and you use he and him and you are basically alienated with United States of America that they don't give a fuck about your country. They don't give a goddamn bit about your poverty and about your crime ratio. And you're using he and him speaking in Spanish from Peru like what they are doing. I'm going to tell you, in Argentina, there's a ministry that use Anita Sarkisian ideology with papers linked, websites linked to Anita Sarkisian. What is, the is, fuck is it, is, is are the, doing? Is it the same organization for Dragon Ball that, you know, did all that? It's the same organization. The same one. Okay. Uh, so they are, they are using the same idea. They are using United States American ideas and they are pushing in Argentina, Chile, Peru. So they don't have an identity. They believe in identity politics, but they are only using the ideas from United States that are spreading around the, around the globe. So I don't understand if you, uh, uh, don't tell me you are Argentino, Chileno, if you use pronouns he am him and speak in Spanish <laughs> because nobody g gives a damn. We give a damn about people and about respect each other. I have a lot of attack about it. I, I, they, people think that I'm I'm some sort of radical, I, uh, radical activist, uh, the anti-social justice warrior, which is worse than anyone else. Bullshit, man. I'm trying to figure out why why are we dividing not just our, not just every country in the world. Why 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 are we talking about it? In Spain, they use Antifa. So what are you doing, man? You live in one of the best places in Europe. You, you have a strong coin. You have a, a strong exchange of economy. And you are trying to attack people from, uh, I don't know, Bolivia. You're attacking Bolivian people while, while you are saying, I have a moral background. I have a moral, like the movie Star Wars. I have the highest ground, okay? Uh, so, so people ask, but it's, it's, it's an issue that is only in the digital spectrum. Once you go out to the another street and you go buy food, this idea of he, him, they, and them, pronouns, BLM, and all that bullshit, bullshit in Latin America do not exist. So this is why they are attacking Japanese people. Japanese people, until 2021, they didn't even know what Black Lives Matter was until Black Lives Matter moved to Tokyo. They attack a VTuber from Chiba, okay, which is called Linka. She was doing um, some sort of um, alliance with the police department of Chiba or national security uh, to spread out the idea of um, riding a bicycle, okay? So all the precautions you have to have to do not ride a bicycle while being drunk. Everyone was fine. Like, do not go with a bicycle, dri uh, driving a bicycle drunk. You don't go with a bicycle listening to your AirPods. It, it was fine. But the uh, feminist radical uh, spectrum from Japan, when people were saying to me, those people do not exist. Those people do not harm anyone. Nobody cares in Japan. Do you really believe they have the power to strike down a VTuber or, or a mangaka? And I say, yes, people from Japan, Japan told me that they have the power. You had to be, I don't know, skin color phobic. I don't give a damn about it. Um, and, you, and you're racist. 
because you are trying to speak out about the Japanese uh, problem. Japanese people are so scared, man. They they shut down the accounts. Yeah, the, yeah, the thing so, about it is, like, the thing about it is, like, you know, Japanese people have a, like, you know, a less confrontational, co like, culture in comparison to, you know, our culture. Because true. Japanese people are taught, even if there's, like, some sort of disagreement that they have, they're still polite, you know, try not to engage into the conversation and blah, blah, blah. Whereas me and you, it's, like, you know, completely different for our cultures. And so when Japanese artists are confronted with this sort of criticism, they, of course, naturally not want to, you know, confront the people because that's how they were raised. What do you think about how we... Let's, let's go to something more positive. How we start to realize uh, to the young generation, let's call it generation... Uh, Uh, we call it Generation Z. You can call it whatever you want. It's you like can Generation also, Z, like Generation Z. C, yeah. yeah, you can call it Generation C. We can call also the other generation, which is Millennials, Centennials. Uh, generation X, I don't think they give, a, they give much credit about what is happening right now between the manga issue. But how we move forward? So you have a Latino talking with someone from the United States, speaking in both language, trying to figure out why they why these attacks are happening. And some people think, let me, let, I want to hear you about it. They think they, 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 they do not do it with harm. They are not evil. They are just brainwashed and they just react because they, they have been growing up with this ideology especially when teenagers grow, 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 are growing up with these ideologies, they, they put a flag on it. They believe it's, it's higher than God. They, they, they create a God themselves. The woke ideology for me is, is change uh, the state or change God in something moral, morally, morally superior. But what is your idea of how we can fix it? Well, or or at, least, at least trying to make a better place for manga artists, anime community, and comics well for starters i think it's a bit too late i'm gonna sound a bit pessimistic but i think it's oh, a bit shit. too late right now because um for japan like i said earlier they have uh funimation in japan right now and so funimation is also you know influencing the japanese productions with their ideology but yeah. i guess one way that's been going on in the united states at a local level is that like a lot of states have been passing bills against uh, critical race theory. And so many states are not allowing the teaching of critical race theories into our classrooms. More recently, I heard that uh, Florida is requiring the students there to have like the anti, you know, communist classes to teach them about the dangers of communism. And so I think that uh, that idea to, you know, teach kids about communism and the dangers of communism is very important, not just for Florida, but for the rest of the state. And also, I think one way to also fight against them is, you know, not to buy their stuff. If there's like some, some, some sort of woke stuff that's like in your media, like, you know, movies or games, don't buy it. We should not purchase it. So that's one way you can also fight against it too. First off, uh, I knew something about history and the <laughs> actually the Soviet Union uh, didn't like uh, Afro-American people at all. They it, didn't like it at all. For, it's, They, it's the same thing for Cuba because um, Fidel Castro, and yeah, the, he hated like the black people. But I remember there was like news of him going to some sort of conference with black people, even though like, you know, there's like texts against black people. It's like, it doesn't make any sort of sense To support, like, you know, Black Lives Matter openly supports the Cuban government. That's what I'm trying to say here. Because there was, like, a statement that was released last year where they said more or less that they're going to blame the United States for the embargo. And it doesn't make any sense because they still have, you know, people, you know, getting the food stuff and the items from other places like Canada and Spain. And so what kind of blockade, what kind of embargo are you talking about? And so... It's like a lot of these things that they're doing is like very hypocritical because if yeah. black lives really matter, then why did you buy like a, like a mansion, even though, you know, it's supposed to be in favor of black lives? 
And then I, re I remember when I, I, I have, I'm, I'm 24 hours uh, learning about United States. You will be surprised how much information I came across United States. I remember perfectly when people were saying, okay, so what, what about saying all life matter? Like everyone life matter. And they went, they went crazy. <laughs> they went, they went berserk. Like how in, how do you dare to tell me that every life matter because we are talking about minority issues like no dude we understand that in united states there have been a lot of confrontation between um white people and afro-americans but it's not everything about united states the world is more bigger than you think so one thing that i realized that black lives matter is actually ruined is when i go to the website and they say that they have to destroy the uh f neutral family okay so what why why do you step up in the family issues i know that a uh, single plan a single motherhoods in the in the Afro-American community is actually quite it's high. Really high. What it's about really, really, really it's, high? It's really high. So, so that's the first thing that I, I realized something is going on. Then I see that all the LGBT movement and, and marketing. And then I see PlayStation giving free BLMs and saying that uh, you can reveal a CD sack. Like there, there was Sony, Sony tell, told in a, in a Facebook page that uh, you can rebuild uh, businesses, but not everyone lives. So what about the riots that merge in the in the blue states and people lost their life? Because uh, if you're going to talk about the good things, talk about the bad things. But this is this is the same thing when you talk about Me Too and all that. Let me give you an example. Uh, what we have here in Argentina is you have one way of uh, seeing things in the world. And if you dare, I promise, and I know that this is in the same United States, if you dare to ask a professor, what about communism? What about the Soviet Union cri crimes? What about the kulaks? What about what happened in Poland? What about uh, the Cuba confrontation? What about the revolution? What about the people who died because someone else thinks that property is not something to hold down. And they are going to give you a zero in the aftermath of the situation. Yeah, the thing You're about, not going yeah, to yeah, like for academia is very biased in this country. I remember reading a study that uh, majority of the teachers in academia are like left wing and like very, very little people are like on the right. And so the academia stuff is, you know, corrupt because like it's one bias for one political side versus the other. I, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, back in the time, in, uh, this is happening in Argentina, not now. In the in the '90s, okay, okay. Uh, the, this socialist idea to spread out in the in the public universities is 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 it has a pipeline of a lot of years. But I never care because even though. In the, in the early uh, 2000s, when you are going to have a conversation with someone left wing, you can, agree, there was a time, not now, that you are going to agree about anime and, and the cool Japanese culture, especially Argentina have a lot of Japanese background. So there wasn't, there was no fight about the gender identity spectrum. There was no fight about the skin color of a character. So you can have some common background to make friends. But now socialism is in the same spectrum of entertainment. They they apply that. So this is why they are so so intelligent. You have you have to give them some points. Like they create an entire idea that is embedded in the entertainment in the industry, in the social media uh, industry and in the YouTuber industry that is so hard to differentiate between the extremists and the centrists. So um, now everything is politics. Anime is politics. Like I have been rough all over the floor for politics in anime, anime, video games, politics also. So it's kind of, man, I just want to play a good game. Yeah, I remember like earlier, like when I was like younger, like there was like no politics in movies. There was no politics in games. And now since like the early 2012, whatever, with Anita Sarkeesian and that kind of crowd, yeah. it's like everywhere now. It's like hard to watch a movie or play a game without, you know, hearing some sort of political issue. 
And, and you know what is crazy? They tell you that politics were were in United States in the entertainment industry for for uh, for an entire generation, but they do not ever agree that identity politics are politics. I do think that identity politics are, are politics because when you see a governor about talking about diversity inclusion, the, let, let me give you an example. Vamos a hablar un ejemplo. Don't you find a little bit weird that after all the harassment backslash of the sexual harassment of Activision and Blizzard, all of the sudden a company buy sixty-seven billion dollars to these companies and then the CEO use pronouns. Phil Spencer used pronouns. Don't you find a little a little bit weird that after all the litigations and the things going on around the, the idea of Blizzard and Activision, remember the time when they tell tell you, don't you don't you guys have cell phones? Taiwan is not a country. Uh, Hong Kong is not a, a out a, a efficiency enough. All disappear because big corporations just keep buying things and we just keep. Saying, okay, it's fine. And if you, and the, the issue is that for now in Argentina, you can speak about this. They slander you. They, they put you on the spot. CNN, CNN will talk about it. BBC will talk about it. Mainstream media will talk about you. They're going to uh, find your old pics and old tweets for 90, 90, 87. I don't know. Twitter is starting in uh, what? 20, like the early 2000s or something. So early yeah. 2000s. They're going. They're going to find something that is uh, harm, and they're going to destroy your reputation. We call it the the. Um, there's um uh different ideas, uh, but for for me we call it the Maslow uh pyramid pyramid the. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's 